Hello everybody, Gene Wisniewski here from ATN, also known as the Mailman. Baiting, it's the most simplistic strategy for animals. Simply pour the bait out, wait in your stand until the animal comes and you start laying animals down. The more bait you pour out, the more animals come until you're a living legend. We all know that's not how it happens. What happens is you pour out bait in a new area, you generally take four to six animals and then the harvest start to get farther and farther between. You actually start to dry up an area after you take too many animals off of it. That seemed to be the case. Well, I've come back to the first place I've ever baited. This is the first place the mailman has ever taken a hog. And what I did is I came up with a goal of every month out of the year I wanted to take hogs. If I could take hogs every month out of the year on my bait spots, that shows any season of the year, any food source that was available, I was able to take hogs. So what I started to do in this area was I ran some tests and many different techniques of baiting. We're quickly going to go over in this video baiting techniques and then we'll move into the stuff that keeps me on hogs. A couple of those things are stacking of baits. I want to maximize your area. I want you to stack your baits in an area, different techniques in one area, and I'm going to show you how to do that. It's going to keep the hogs coming to your area instead of the other people's area. We're going to go over small parcels of land and large parcels of land. I'm going to show you how to break down those areas and how to maximize each of those. We're also going to go over land that only you're allowed to hunt and land like this. This is a hunt club. 20 some members there's a lot of pressure on this land so i want to show you how to maximize your areas on that property i want to keep the hogs on your areas for the longest amount of time and there's ways that i came up with doing that we're also going to go over pressured land where how you can hide your baits i was very successful in hiding some baiting areas an area like this is on the open is going to get hunted and someone else is going to come in another club member but i'm going to also show you how to hide your baiting areas to be more successful we're going to go over moon phases. Moon phases is big. After taking hogs every month out of the year, I wanted to take hogs every week of the month. And whenever you get into that, you got to deal with the full moon phases. So there's some areas I have that I baited that were very good during the full moon. We'll go over those. My goal here is for you to learn to stay on hogs all year instead of having your areas dry up. And we're going to go over all of that stuff. We're going to go over land that has a lot of natural food and land that doesn't have a lot of natural food where they kind of pass through. We're going to go all that. So first what we're going to do is we're going to jump into the techniques. It's going to be a little bit boring maybe. What we're going to do is just go over the techniques that are used to bait hogs. We'll do that very quickly, then we'll move into the good stuff and we'll keep you on those hogs all year long. You can't talk hog baiting without starting with high capacity feeders. You fill them up, you leave them go for months, and there's an advantage to them on land that you can only hunt. But if someone else can hunt your land, I don't tend to use these because they're hard to move. If somebody finds my stuff, and I'm sure you can find this one on Google Maps from the aerial photos because it's out in the open, somebody's going to come in here and you're not going to be able to move this very quickly. So my setups are a little bit different. This is my friends, but I wanted to mention high capacity feeders because they are the number one way that people bait. Just throw that food in there and hunt for months. Now we're going to go to one of my setups. Okay, this is more the high capacity feeder setup that I like. I want to mix it with the natural foods. We got an oak ridge here, white oaks, red oaks, and then we got pin oaks in some places. I like to mix it in so there's a variety rather than in open places. I still rebarb all of my legs because I do not want pigs knocking over my feeder. I reinforce it, but this is more the setup that I use specifically is a high capacity feeder, rebarb to the ground in natural food sources. That's the way I like them. Let's hit the next two baiting techniques here on one stand. My favorite is the whole set. The reason I like that is it brings the pigs and it stops them in one particular area. It gives my hunter, if I bring somebody with me, a long period of time at a stationary pig. It also has them spend a lot of time here. These pigs will come here and spend hours here digging up this. It makes them work for it. So they're digging down into the ground. One of the cautions is don't, do not put this around, your, say, your oak trees or trees you may want to lose. It's not that you lose the trees, but what happens is they're digging down in the roots and you may have a bad mass crop if you have an area around some oak trees where they're, they're digging up the roots. So some of the roots are damaged to the trees. It doesn't take the tree down, but it, I don't want it to affect your mass crop. So what you do is just dig a two foot hole with your post hole diggers, sour corn. Fill your bucket up with three quarters of the way of corn, 
put some yeast in it and some water during the summer. During the fall and spring, I like to put in maybe some Kool-Aid, cherry, grape, strawberry Kool-Aid, and it, it makes a better scent, and they'll find it a lot quicker. But in the summer, this heat, I just throw a little bit of yeast in there, and it's good. Those hogs will actually come. We're going to throw some video. They'll kneel down at this, and they will spend a long period of time stationary for that hunter. Up this ridge, there's a deer stand, and I stand underneath the deer stand whenever I take the shot down this one lane. So it's great for keeping them right here. Now we go into the portable feeders, the hanging feeders. The reason I like them is the batteries are smaller. It runs on two double A's rather than the big batteries that are in the high capacity ones. Those batteries are expensive and they go through them. I like these ones because it's just a double A. I can come in here during deer season on this property. I don't have permission to deer hunt, so I come in around deer season, untie a rope, and I can get this stand out of here in two to three minutes. Whereas the big high capacity ones are hard to move and I like to keep them where they're at. So there's a lot of benefits to these hanging stands. I can put them in a lot thicker areas. I can put them and move them very quickly whenever I want to and get them off of properties during turkey season. We have another problem. If there's a turkey hunter on a land, I don't want to bait and get that person in trouble. So the portable stands along with the whole set are two other ways you can bait your hogs in. I like to mix in overloading or overbaiting my areas with my common practices of baiting. And this is the reason why. I really like to do this before a client comes into town. So, for instance, if I have a client coming into town, what I'll do is I'll put out corn like this. Now, what I want to do is I want to check my camera how many days after I really dumped corn like this until they hit it hard. So, say for instance, it takes them two days to do this. Well, two days before my next client comes to hunt, then I will do this again. I will overload a baiting area. And it, I see it on, seen it on TV. You see guys do it. But what I like to do is this really preps an area for clients coming in. I got some people to drive a long way to come hunt with me. And what I want to do is I want to put them on the best chance of a hog. So what I'll do is I will overload my baiting area. This keeps them here a while longer than the feeder. Feeders, what, I think one of the disadvantages, it does not keep them around long. They they move and they, they move through really quickly. They wipe it up and they're gone. This allows them to stay for a little bit longer. Gives my hunter the best shot at getting a pig in a stationary position or staying here a long amount of time. That's what I'm really looking for whenever I do this. Okay, now that we've gone over baiting basics, we're back here at my original spot. This is the original spot I took a pig and I did what every other hunter does. I come to an open area and I put a high capacity feeder on. I took four or five pigs and I started to notice something. I started to notice that the feeder would broadcast some corn out into the brush and the bigger pigs on my camera would stay in that area, in the brush, but they would never come out into this area. And I'd have the smaller pigs out here. So I'd be in my stand, I would hear the bigger pigs in the brush, but they would never come out into this opening. And it was very frustrating at that time. I wanted to take the bigger pigs so what I did is I came up with a plan, stacking of baits. What I mean by stacking of baits, I have two versions of it. I will stack on one stand. We have the stand behind me. I stack two techniques or more techniques on one stand. So we have a high capacity feeder and to my right 25 yards I added a whole set. So I stacked two baiting techniques on one stand and then another version of the stacking is 80 yards away I added a whole other stand, a blind with another baiting technique that I'm going to show you when we get down there. So I stack that area. So there's stacking of a stand and there's stacking of an area. What that did for me, in the brush I put the whole set and those bigger pigs began to hit that whole set while the smaller pigs were out here. And I start to take the bigger pigs off of her. Once I took the bigger pigs out of the group, this group of smaller pigs kept coming back. And my numbers just automatically jumped up because I'm taking pigs off of both areas now. I take a pig off of there, next time I take a pig off of here. When I wanted more pigs out here in the opening, I threw in a third technique. That was my overload. I'd bring a bag a two of corn out here and just overload it two or three days before I'd hunt. There'd be so much corn here, the pigs would hit it, and I'd slide in. If there was still corn on the ground, I would hit that area and I'd take a pig on here. So I began to stack this area. Over top of my whole sets, I'd even start to use the portable feeders to keep that whole set active. And that's how I began to take more and more pigs off of an area and out of a group. 
the pigs weren't as skittish of one area when there was multiple areas. Then I added a third area. We're going to go down to it in a minute. And that's when ATN noticed me. The video down there I'm going to put up. And you're going to see some great video of my other area that I added that confirmed to me that this stacking of baits worked. It was working really good because I could stay on top of the pigs. Let's take a look at the whole set next, and I'll show you how I stack on, on one stand. Here's your example of stacking on a single stand. What we have is the original spot I took my hog over here to the left, high capacity feeder. Once in a while, I would overload it on the ground whenever I was going to hunt it. Here I cleared one lane that goes up to my stand, and it's very close, 25 yards away. That's all you need. You just need a little variance there. But we have a thick area, and we have an opening. So here I did a whole set. And sometimes I would put the portable feeder above it. It just changed it up enough. Just enough to keep them coming. They love this area. I've seen a lot of tracks here, a lot of family tracks here. So that's why I wanted to stay here. But these two areas kept the hogs coming. Now we're going to move down to the other scenario of stacking an area. We have this area, and I stacked within 80 yards of here. Another area we're going to go down to, that's the area that got me noticed by ATN. I'm going to show you some great video down there. But what I did is another technique down there, and I stacked this area. I kept this area concentrated. The hogs wanted to come to this area because there was so much bait. I didn't bait more than other people. I just concentrated it. There's guys on here that have, say, five feeders in five different areas. They're baiting the same amount of corn as me. What I'm doing is I'm concentrating it in an area that I know is good, and I'm staying on that same group over and over again. The hogs are staying here for hours. I had proof in my camera. The hogs are staying here for hours. They were staying on my stuff longer. I would actually take a lot more hogs. I believe I took 40 hogs that year off of this property. I took more than everyone else combined at their feeders. And they had more feeders if you combined them up than I did. I just concentrated it in that area. So now let's jump to the next spot. Okay, now we moved into an area that confirmed stacking was going to work well for me. What I did is I wanted to do something different down here. First off, the wind direction is different. This stand was created in case the wind direction was bad on top of the hill 80 yards away from me. I could come down into this area. What I also did was a three-hole set here. I wanted to spread the hogs out. I wanted to get good video. I wanted to get a lot of video. At that time, I was not with ATN, and I wanted to get some good video. The video that I created here actually got me noticed by ATN, and I was contacted by them from that video, and that video is still used to this day. I also went with a portable feeder here that kept the hogs coming all the time. Those feeders keep the hogs coming. They always want to cross through here and check and see. The holes keep them here for long periods of time, so I fill them whenever I'm about to hunt. So that's the benefits of that combination of that stacking. Also, this area here has a, has a pretty thick canopy here. What I noticed was during full moon times of the month, this area was great. There's still shade. We're almost approaching noon here. And it's still pretty shady in here, nice and cool. So you have a difference here when there's a full moon. Also when it rained, when I was only hunting bait, when it rained or thundered, I would sat on my blind. And they like this area because a little bit of a protection from the weather down in this area. We're downhill a little bit, and there's a very thick canopy. So this area here is an example of stacking with my other areas. I really stacked that area. I would actually hunt the top sometimes and come down and pull this card in the morning and see that hogs were here for hours and I was up there in the full moon period and I saw nothing. That's what taught me and put me on this spot during the full moon was the pulling of the cards after I hunted. So I'd hunt up there, bait down here and pull the card. Sometimes I'd hunt down here, I'd go pull the card up there and that's how I started to see how the stacking worked and how areas are not hit all the time by hogs. They may hit this one, but not hit that one. They may hit that one, but not this one. So you start to learn a lot about hogs when you run a lot of equipment in a small area. And that's what I want you to do. I want you to try. Just try it sometime. Run three feeders in a small area and see what happens and see if those hogs are actually hitting all of your feeders. I think you'll find out some amazing things about your hogs and you'll learn. That's what we're here to do on this video is I want to teach you a few things that maybe you can try and keep you on those hogs all year. All right, on this spot, we're going to give you a couple of the mailman tricks. Whenever you start to get successful at hog hunting and you're on a pressure lease, we're talking about pressured property right now, what happens is everybody wants to know where you're at. They want to find your feeding spots. They want to find your feeders. 
what they do is they listen for feeders. It's all happened to me on this pressure land. So on this land, we have a very pressured piece of property. Now, I got a tip from a dog hunter. He actually hunts pigs with dogs, and he used to be in a club, and he told me anytime he dropped off dogs right in this area, he got on pigs within minutes. So I knew that that probably was a bedding area. They're going to run them during the day. What I did is I explore for new hog areas. What I do is I came into this thick area and I found an old road bed and I just put corn on it in the camera. I'm exploring for new areas. I drive by the area all the time whenever I go to my other spots, but I want to get a new area to hunt. So what I did is I came in here, put the corn out. I mean, I hit it immediately. I hit those pigs immediately in their bedding area. Now, the trail to my stand is right here to my blind. But I'm going to tell you this, if I walk that every day with corn, these guys would know it. These guys actually watch my track. So what I would do is, I actually would walk past the trail and put your foot marks out there and jump off of the trail and come back. Now, when I go in this trail here, I do not walk in that trail here. What I do is I go out around this tree and I sneak down and I hit my trail farther down. I'm going to take you down there and I'm going to show you the whole set that I have. But that's a trick that you use on pressure land where you don't want these guys moving in on you and taking your spots because they will. They'll come in there and they'll hunt them spots that you baited and you put all your work in for. So what we're doing here is I'm just going to give you a little tip, a mailman tip of how to get around these guys. Walk past your area. They would tell me, Gene, your, your boot prints disappear. Where do they disappear? Where are you at? And that's exactly why, because I knew what they were doing. They would see me parked in an area. They would follow my tracks, and I would, I would double back and get to my spot. So a little trick for you on those pressured properties. Okay, what you have here is a spot that I just snuck in on. I have an old roadbed right where you're at, and I have a roadbed this way. And what I did is I have my blind up there. All I got to do is slide into that area. And look down here the problem with this area is it's very boring to watch one lane but it got me a few pigs whenever I would find that my camera was active here another thing I would do is if I was unsuccessful at my other stands up until four five six in the morning I'd come here because this was the last spot that they hit because they bet around here so I'd hit this right off the bat in the morning it saved some of my hunts so this was just an exploratory area. I came in because of the dog hunter telling me the hogs were here. I dumped a little bit of corn. I found an area. I dug a hole. I put a hole set in just to save me on some nights when I'd hunt on the other side of the property and wouldn't find anything. Sneaking in kept the guys away from it. So that's a little bit on this spot. Just a couple tips to find that little extra spot to get you that one or two pigs a month that keeps you going. All right, let's jump into small properties. This is going to be a 40 acre property, but I honestly only hunt the bottom 10 acres. What I found is, confirming on the other properties, if I stack this property, and how I stack this property is two hanging feeders. One to the right of your screen, one to the left of your screen along the thick bedding area. What has happened is I ran two cameras, I would take pigs off of one, and they generally would stay at the other one and wouldn't show up at the other one. Once I would take them on the left one, they would go to the right one. So what happens is, by stacking on my small properties, I'm able to maximize it. I, I took a 318 pounder off of here. Now, here's a bonus thing that I learned, and these, this is something I'm always learning with these pigs. I built this platform for a limited mobility hunter to come down, and he brought a friend with him. What happened was, we set up on a group of pigs. When I come here myself or with my son, we generally shoot one time. If the pigs stop again, you can take a second shot. Generally, most of the time, two shots is the most that I take because the pigs are standing still. What happened was I brought these gentlemen down here, and I think they shot between six and nine times. Just shot at pigs as they were running. It took two months for those pigs to come back. So what I learned is on these places where you stack, where there's two bait piles for one stand, if you spray and pray, you're generally going to screw it up for a while. If you want to stay on pigs all year, every week of the year you want to take a hundred you want to get up there around a hundred at least 52 pigs a year you're getting just slow down take good shots on them if they stop take another shot if they leave i tell my son all the time if they leave don't worry about it they're going to come back to that bait pile and we'll get them don't be in a rush to put a big stack up because the stack doesn't last long three days after a stack's put down people forget about it the one thing they don't forget is if you kill all year 
All year is what we're after. The goal is for you to kill every month out of the year, then every week out of the year. You start doing that, and you're doing something with your pigs. In the introduction, I talked a little bit about wind barriers, and I'm going to take a look at one right now, and that's just elevation. I always like to use elevation to my advantage if I can in areas that pigs frequent. So what I've done is there's a four-wheeler trail right behind the camera, but what I have is cl a cleared a trail so that I'm able to sneak in to the top of this crest of this hill, and I'm able to look down over at my bait. I sometimes stalk in here, and I say about half the pigs that I've taken off of this section here have been whenever I stalked in. If not, I'll stand there maybe half an hour to an hour and watch. Even if the wind blows that way, I'm, I'm clear, and these hogs are way down at the bottom, and I'm able to take hogs this way. So one of the wind barriers that I use is land elevation. These hogs are not going to circle around behind me up to this four-wheeler trail to scent check this bait. They're just going to come in, and I'm going to be able to take advantage of the elevation here. Okay, we're right here at the edge. What I do is I come down and I use this stump as a reference. I'll slide down that trail right to here. I'm able to look down to my lane to my bait pile and use this wind barrier. What this does is allows me to take one of the factors, their best factor of a pig is that nose. I want to take the nose out of the equation. I'm able to get more pigs. Let's talk about another wind barrier right now and that's going to be this creek here. This bridge crosses the creek. And this creek is pretty deep in some areas. It's obvious where the hogs cross the creek. And in a stalking situation, I came across some hogs on this side of the bridge, and I watched where they actually crossed the creek. Now, on the other side there, you have a uh, narrow food plot, and they cross it very quickly. And that's a hard place to get a good shot or to get good video for ATN customers. So what I want to be able to do is catch those hogs before they cross. And I have a natural wind barrier here. So what I do is... I come to the bridge where the crossing is and I have my sour corn here. What I will do is I will probably go 20 yards past the bridge and I will cut a lane from the food plot to the creek. On this side of the creek I will cross and I will make a hard left and I will go in there at the same 20 to 30 yards and I'll cut a lane on that side and I'll place my bait. What I'm doing is I'm keeping myself on this side of the creek and I'm keeping the hogs on this side of the creek. The creek is crossed in some places. I know those areas and it's probably another 60 to 70 yards down downstream. But what I want to do is I want to keep those hogs on this side of the creek at the bait and that's what I am able to do here. I'm able to set up on this side of the creek and shoot on this side of the creek. Whenever I go to retrieve the hog I obviously come right across there and drag it across. But this is a nice little wind barrier. I know that the hogs are not going to circle around the bait to check it whenever the wind's blowing this way. So that's another wind barrier that I use whenever I find a piece of property like this with a bridge, easy access across. I just cross, go a little bit further in and dump some bait, and I keep myself and keep the pigs away from me so that I'm able to take more pigs. Okay, now we're in the brain center of the whole operation, and that's my drive home or my drive to hunt my hunting areas. This is when we're taking all the information we've gathered, everything I've brought to you in this video, the moon phase, the weather, the season, all of that. Where we hunted last, the pressure, we're bringing it all together and we decide on that 45 minutes, hour and a half drive to the hunting spot or back where we're going next. And that's the big thing. As hog hunters, we are different than deer hunters. Deer hunters wait till a certain time of year and then they go in and take a handful in like three months. We as hog hunters get to hunt 365 days a year. So what that means is we pressure our animals. We have to have a rotation of our baited areas. We got to know when to switch to another area. Confidence in your area is a big thing. What you want to do is have confidence in reading that camera, knowing whenever it's going to be successful. Sitting there at night is a much easier whenever you know that they're coming. You have a great feeling that they're coming. So as you're driving in your car, I take this time, man, to really think where I'm going next. Even after a really good night and a really good harvest, I'm thinking, where am I going next? When am I next going out? And what place am I going to go to? It's a constant rotation. You can actually change up your baiting, bait one spot and hunt another spot each time you go down. And check those cameras and learn those patterns. That's what we're there for, is try and remember those patterns. Try and remember as much as you can. Even write it down if you have to. To develop that pattern, on those animals and you'll be able to stay on them every month out of the year. 
in conclusion, ATM wants you to become more successful. That's why we actually do these videos. We want to help you produce those videos, post those success stories online, and we want you to be able to take more hogs all year long. Hopefully you've driven by an area like this and you see it and you say, I'm going to try that, and it becomes more successful, and you're able to kill hogs and munch maybe you haven't before. So thanks for liking, subscribing. Stay tuned for many more from ATN, and we appreciate you being a customer.